Dave Biddle, Bucknuts. Hi, Larry. Can you hey, talk Dave. about the development of Jalen Holmes? I know he's been playing a decent amount for a true freshman. Do you see him playing more? Just talk about his, his development, if you would. Please. Well, really, uh, he's been pretty, playing pretty well. You know, he's just a young guy trying to learn how to play in the system. You know, 10 or 15 plays here and there, just kind of get him get his feet wet. And as we move through the season, hopefully he can give us 20, 25 plays. Sean Frazier went down with an injury. Is he okay or is it? Not guys? sure yet what's going to happen for the game. You know what I mean? He had an ankle injury. We're just going to wait and see what happens. I want to, and last thing, I want to get a quick update on Noah Spence. I'm sure you guys don't know exactly what's going to happen next year, but what can you tell us about Noah? Is um, What's going on with Noah right now that you can tell us? Uh, just that he's getting, uh, he's seeking service, getting help. Uh, he's just trying to get healthy. You know, that's the biggest thing. He's going to class and still doing the same thing, but he also, again, some counseling, those kind of things. Yep. Second row middle, Ari. Larry, um, uh, Ari Washman, hey, Ari. Um, Just was wondering, now you're almost a, a year into this here at Ohio State, and um, you know, you're going to be playing Penn State this week, obviously, but what's it been like for you trying to chart out Ohio State's territory in the recruiting areas that you spent so many years at Penn State you know, establishing for yourself and having to go against them? And, you know, how's it going for you? It's going pretty good. You know, actually, you know, Maryland area is probably still the same area. You know, I have Maryland, Virginia, D.C., and the guys that know me know me. So I'm just walking in with a different color on. But I think they know the value of what I bring to the table and the fact of what I'm looking for recruiting-wise. And Ohio State speaks for itself and education-wise and program. So I'm not selling anything different. I'm really just selling something that I really believe in, and I believe this is a great institution. Is there any roadblocks or, you know, people that you've known? Or, I mean, were there any challenges to just – Besides just putting on a different color shirt that you had to go with, with charting out that territory for this program when Penn State's been so successful and continues to be successful there? Well, it's kind of exciting because, you know, Ohio State has gone into Maryland a lot. You know, you look at our roster, not a lot of Maryland, Virginia players in the roster. And so now going in with Ohio State, uh, it really helped because there's a lot of interest in us right now. Front row middle, Todd. Larry, how unusual is it going to be to be on the visiting sideline in the visiting locker room at, in that stadium this week? Uh, it'll be different. You know, the first time you spend 18 years in one place, one place for a long time, and then you walk back in there and different sideline and uh, place you've been for 18 years. But I'm looking forward to going back, and I'm looking forward to going back with Ohio State University. So I'm looking forward to going back home and being excited to play in the stadium. How's uh, how's uh, Steve Miller played the last few weeks? It seemed like he kind of got off to a little bit of a slow start and, and come on the last few weeks. You know, Steve Miller, first time starter. You know, for in his career for us, and I came in and. Uh, we talked about him this morning. He really is doing a great job. He, he's a great worker, and that's what he brings to the table. He'll play hard every snap. Uh, he's smart. He, he listens. He does exactly what you tell him to do. And I, I think he played really well last week also. And front row right, Tim. Yeah, Larry, elaborate a little. You're going back. You were there for 18 years. I mean, uh, uh, did you ever feel for teams that came in there on, like, white out the night nights and things like that? I mean, how, you know, I mean, what, what was it like, I guess, that atmosphere from that side right? Uh, it's pretty exciting. It was a great student body, great fan base. Uh, it'll be loud, uh, and we counted on that being loud, going team coming in. And our players, you know, they went to another notch when they got to play in front of uh, 108,000 white out, those kind of things. So it's going to be fun. So uh, it's going to be a great environment, but, you know, there's 808,000 here. You know what I mean? So that's fun to play in front of also. So I think it'll be exciting. I think our players will be Jack going back in there uh, and to play again and playing in Penn State. To say, what will, you, what will you tell your guys about that about that environment? Because now you're on the other side. I mean, how do you how do you actually prepare for something like that? Well, the best way to block the noise out is score points and play great defense. You know, if you do that, it'll be pretty quiet. And so, hopefully, the, the selling point is going to play well, and then that's the key. Is there a little bit of melancholy here though, too? For you? I mean, you spent all that time there. There was a time when some people thought you might be the head coach, and you, you were the interim head coach for a while and stuff. Did, did you leave there on? Did you feel like on good terms? How did you feel like you left? I left on my terms, and that's the good thing about it. I left on my terms. I felt it was time to move on. Uh, Coach Frank had brought his staff in. I didn't want to be the guy to be held over again. And so I felt the best thing for him to do was move on. And I, I found a great home. And I'm very happy here at Ohio State University and, and really look forward uh, to the future here for, for many years. Front row left, Doug. Larry, are you going to go see your old house? No, I'm not. <laughs> no, we sold it, got very lucky and sold it. About three weeks into the process, so I won't stop by. You know, I'm going to be in a hotel, get planning for the game. I won't see anything, to be honest with you. Uh, we talked. Have you been able to rotate on the defensive line like you had hoped coming into the season? I know you said and you said you played a lot of guys on Saturday. Has it been what you wanted, or has it maybe been not quite 
Which one? We're close. And you know, we're playing six, seven guys. You know, I'm learning used to eight and nine. Uh, but it depends on the game, too. You know, we have some young players we got to get ready. And we have good players. It's tough to really take those guys out. But right now, I'm just trying, just trying to rest them. You think about last week, I think Joey Bosa played 51 plays. I'm opposed to playing 67 plays. And that, to me, that's going to help us down the road. Mike Bennett played 42 plays. That's going to help him down the road. And so we, we like to continue the rotation where we play seven, eight guys and we go for it. We just got to wait and see. But we're going to rotate. Yeah. Final question for Riker Clay. Yeah, Coach Clay Hall, ABC6. I uh, was asking Coach Meyer about just outwardly the difference between Mike Rabel and yourself and, and though you know, he might be more colorful language or whatever it is. But he thought you were very similar. What is your approach to coaching young kids and, and what do you think the common denominator is there? I think we both do it different. I think we're both a technician. I think we're fundamentally sound in our coaching philosophy and what we believe in. Uh, there's different ways to deliver a message you know, to players. Mine might be a little different. Uh, I am a developer. I like to really be close to a player, develop a relationship. And I tell guys all the time, I don't want to coach you. I want to invest in you. And if I invest in you, really, at the end of the day, when you have your first, you get married, have your first kid, you'll call me up and say, hey, Coach Johnson, I just had my first kid. That's the investment. And when you can invest in a kid and show them that, boy, they'll, they'll do anything in the world for you. And so that's kind of my, my march, is try to make sure the players understand that, you know, I trust them, I believe in them, but I'm also going to invest in them. You, you coach a, a rugged brand of football, and yet you said kind of in the preseason you get away from it. You kind of <coughs> like being in the plants, and arranging the flowers. Uh, a little bit different than maybe you, you might expect. <laughs> that's, that's kind of my style, you know. Hey, uh, you know, we just built a new home here, and, and I had a chance to get out in the yard and plant some flowers. It's just my nice way to get peace, you know, just kind of think to myself. Sure. Yeah. Have you ever been in the opposing locker room at the stadium? I have not. What, what do you expect? I mean, have you heard about it? I have heard about it. And what, 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 what had you heard about it? <laughs> it's very small. 